No, it was close. You know, we had it to one touchdown, and um, that's when we had the pick. There was a couple different times we had different, you know, situations to. Uh, you know, it was a way closer game than that, but that's how it ended up. So that's what you're with. Another impressive offensive performance by the Vandals goes to waste as the defense struggles to slow down Georgia Southern. But Vandal coach Paul Petrino thinks his team will put things together this Saturday as New Mexico State looms. Inside the Vandals, next. Hey, welcome into another week of Inside the Vandals. I'm your host, Tom Purvis, joined now by Idaho head football coach Paul Petrino. Coach, thanks so much for being with us. You bet. Thanks for being here. Well, Coach, uh, a game much closer than the score indicated in a tough loss to Georgia Southern. How close did that game feel to you, especially when you guys were on your run in that second half and really made it a much closer ball game? Yeah, you know, we were right in there. I had a chance to win. We uh, got those two scores at the end of the third quarter, went for two on both, both of them. So could have cut it to a one you know, one possession game, didn't, didn't convert the second two-point play, but it was, it was a nine-point game. Um, we got the ball back, so we, we were right there. You know, that's just where we got to take that next step and, and go get a score and a stop and, and give ourselves a chance to win. But, you know, up to that point, you know, I thought our guys, we, we played them hard and played them tough. We just needed to take advantage of a couple of things that happened early in the game. You know, we first three drives of the game, we go right down there, we get a field goal. Then we drive right down there again. Jacob has that big play, and then we get stopped on a fourth and you know a fourth down, and then the third drive we go down and score a touchdown, so we get ten points. And you know that's just where the defense has got to get a stop early on, and, and we got to convert two of those for touchdowns to give us the lead. Was that the biggest thing in your mind, or what other things stuck out to you that prevented you guys from winning this one? Um, I think that was big. I think the third quarter, early in the third quarter, was big because uh, they took the opening drive of the second half, went and scored. And then we had a three and out where, uh, you know, on third down, Rich wasn't covered in the flat, which would have been a huge play, and the ball got tipped. So, uh, and, then, and then they went and took another long drive. So, really, I looked up at the scoreboard. There was three minutes left, and we'd had the ball three plays. And then we took that next drive, you know, and went and scored. And then the defense got a turnover, and we went and scored again. So, I think it was kind of the opening part of the game. We needed to get more points on the board, and then... You know, the first part of the third quarter, defense needed to get a stop so we could get more plays. Was Georgia Southern, were they the best team you played so far? Where do they compare? Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's fair to compare teams. You know, I don't know if that's fair to compare to the other teams. But uh, they're a good team. You know, they run the ball well. Um, anytime you can run the ball like that, I think they were very confident in how they could run the ball and move the ball on us. That's why they onside kick, you know, onside kick. I think they were trying to keep it out of our offensive hands. So they, they, they did the onside kick, and they went for it on a fourth down on their own 30. Um, so I think they were pretty confident that they could move the ball on us whenever they wanted to, and they, and they were a little leery of us being on offense and didn't want us to have the ball. It seemed that oftentimes your defense was in a position to make the play. You guys were in the right spots. A lot of times, though, the tackles just weren't being made. Is that what you saw out there? Yeah. You know, there was just times that, that we were one-on-one -on -one with their back or their quarterback, and we just didn't make the play. So that's just something that... Uh, Got to keep working on him. Got to be able to make that tackle. Does that become more of an area of emphasis this week in practice, or is it just something that your guys know they have to do? And and you we've do been the trying same to make things? an emphasis of that. Every, you know, every week we've been working hard on it. Some games we've made improvement on it. Um, uh, that game, a couple times, just one on one. You know, they just beat us. Um, I'm not sure if it was. It wasn't from effort. And it wasn't from. Uh, you know, just we, we got beat one on one. So that's just something we got to keep working on, and that's something we got to improve. Now, in, in the second half, you guys are down 33 10, facing fourth down from around your own 25. You go for it, convert a gutsy call, end up turning it into an 83 yard touchdown drive. How big was that drive for you guys? Well, that was big. You know, I just, that was after I had looked at the scoreboard and we had had the play, you know, we had three plays, you know, and, and I was like, we got to get, we got to get more. You know, we're not stopping them, so we better go for it um, so we can get more plays and have, have a chance to go score. And it was a great catch by Podrowski and a really good play by Matt. And then that kind of kept us on the field because when we could stay on the field, you got their D-line tired and they, they weren't as efficient. And um, so we just needed to stay on the field. And really, any time we did that, we drove the ball down the field. Going into the game, you guys were 12 for 14 
on fourth downs. It was actually something that the, the broadcasting crew mentioned as well. You seem to like to go for it in certain situations, and you may have already kind of alluded to what you just said, but how do you determine when it's the right time to go? Um, usually it's any time we cross the 50, but then in sometimes in situations of a game, um, you know, I just feel like that we have to try to keep the ball in our hands. And a lot of it depends on how the defense is playing. Like early in the South Alabama game, I didn't go for a couple that I looked back on and probably should have, but our defense was playing good. So I thought, let's punt the ball and put them in, you know. But uh, probably when, when I feel like we're not stopping them and we got to keep the ball in our hands, and I'm going to probably go for it. How much trust do you have to have in your quarterback, in your offense? So you guys' offense has been playing well. Does that help you feel more comfortable about going for it? Yeah, it does. It does. And trust that Matt's going to make the right decisions and that he's accurate throwing the ball. That, that helps a lot to go for it. During those two touchdown drives, you guys, you seemed very confident. Your entire offense seemed like you guys were confident that you could move the ball. How much have you seen that confidence grow from the beginning until now? Yeah, I think our offense is coming. I think when they take the field, they believe they're going to score pretty much against anybody we play. Um, we just got to get it where we do score every time, to be honest with you. That's how we're going to have to, that's what we need to do right now to get a win. And especially early in the games, we score touchdowns and don't settle for field goals or don't, you know, settle for trying field goals or, or missing a, you know, fourth down conversion. What's the status with Matt Linehan? He obviously left the game, didn't come back in. He's fine. He could have came back in. I just, you know, it was at a point, uh, if the game was still at one point, you know, or one possession, he'd have been back in, but uh, uh, he's fine. Well, on defense, Russ Ivey has been improving every game for Idaho, led the team in tackles with 11 against Georgia Southern. Sarah Jacobson had a chance to chat with Russ about being a Vandal. I'm here with sophomore Russell C of EE. Thank you so much, Russell, for being with us today. Oh, of course. Um, so tell me, you're originally from Hawaii, which is quite a ways away. So oh, yeah. why did you decide to come up here and join the Idaho Vandals? Well, I had an offer from Hawaii, uh, Hawaii University of Hawaii, but I felt like I wanted to get off the island. And my brother was here too, so I never got to play football with him. And I figured it would, it would be something special to me and him to come here. No, that's awesome. So your brother also played for the Vandals, and you guys have both had a pretty impressive career. So looking back when you started playing football, did you see yourself playing college ball way back when? I mean, I prepped myself to try and play collegiate football, but it, I mean, God gave me the talent to come here, and that's why I'm here now. Definitely. So tell me, what does it take to be um, a great defensive player for the Vandals? It's heart, uh, passion, and... Mm -hmm. You got to know your stuff, you know, at the collegiate level, it, you know, everybody's good. Everybody has talent, so you got to be one step ahead of the game. So what are your goals for yourself this season, for the rest of the season and for the team? Just make all the plays that, that comes my way, you know. Uh, I, I would like to lead the secondary in interceptions, and but other than that, I just want to make plays that, that um, I'm given. Definitely. So I'm going to take you out of football for a second. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what is something that people don't know about you outside of football? Uh, coming from Hawaii, I, I love the water. That's basically it. But uh, that's all about me. No, that's awesome. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Well, thank you so much for talking with us and good luck on the rest of the season. Thank you. With Inside the Vandals, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Nice piece right there by Sarah Jacobson on, on Russ. What do you like about Russ? You know, I think he just brings a great passion to the field. He, he flies around. He plays the game the way you want to see it played. Um, he always has a ton of emotion. He likes hitting, you know, and that, that's a big, that's something you want in all your defensive players. And uh, he just brings great passion and, and emotion. And it's contagious. The other guys around him, you know, get that way. I think the other players really like him and feed off of his energy. So, uh for him to be playing as well as he is right now is great. It's great for our future with him being a young player. Has he been fairly steady, or has, have you seen pretty big improvements in his game throughout this season thus far? Yeah, I think he's improved. I think he made great improvements in spring ball, you know, from what he was the year before. Um, I think he had a little a little lull during fall camp where, um, you know, he was a little banged up. And then probably since about the third week of the season on, he's really improved a lot. Pretty exciting that he's just a sophomore, like you did. You mentioned. Yeah, right? I think it's anytime you see a lot of these young players playing so good, that's very exciting for the future. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we're back, we look ahead as the Vandals get ready for homecoming here in the Dome. They'll be taking on New Mexico State when Inside the Vandals returns. <laughs> 